and we found it. Oh, yes. I am so excited over this. Okay. So today is the big day. It is episode 30, and that means it is World Download Day. So if you're a supporter of any tier, whether that is on Patreon, whether that is on Twitch, or on the Discord, or even here on YouTube, you get access to the World Downloads channel. All you have to do is link your accounts over on the Discord channel. You can find that link down in the description below if you haven't already checked that out. But the World Downloads channel is available to you and, well... It's going to be there as soon as this video goes live. So be sure to check that out. And well, it's now time to get on with the build and to start today's episode. Today is the big day. That's right. Today is episode 30 and I want to finish the build behind me. But it's also world download day because every 10 episodes, I try to provide a world download to those of you who are a supporter of any tier, whether that is a supporter over on Twitch, a supporter on Patreon, a supporter on Discord, or even a supporter here on YouTube. You guys guys get access to the world downloads via the discord so check that out link down in the description below and if you have any questions just ask around in the discord i have tons of staff willing to help now it's build time build day so to say i have not finished the tower up yet but i do want to finish the tower and i have some plans for this tower i want it to be turned into well a clock tower a clock tower that's actually functional. And I've never played around with this create mechanic, but there is a mechanic that can actually display the minutes or hours, hands and second hands all together. But to do this, I think there's a little bit of adventuring I need to do first because I am still missing one crucial part of this pack that is going to be incredibly helpful for me to be able to build what I envision. And that is going to involve us hopefully finding the angel's blessing. Now, I have located two more structures in the world here, and this is important because these two structures are supposedly supposed to house uh, this item, or at least have the chance to house this item. It's a pretty low chance as far as I have seen, but there's a chance still. So I do want to explore them before I have to try and build this out by hand. Well, I mean, I don't have to build it out by hand anyways, but before I have to build it out without any sort of flight, because right now all I have is an elytra and some teleportation, which is better than nothing, but it would be very, very helpful if I didn't have to constantly try to land on something like this all the time. So what structures am I talking about exactly? Well, there are the jungle temples that are the better jungle temples. And then there's also the pyramids. Those are two very decent places that we should be able to hopefully find this very particular item. Uh, it does list right here, jungle, we also have village, desert, um, and these are the structures. So we should be able to locate them. By the way, if you click the dungeon chest button here, you can actually see everything else that shows up in that list. For example, the ancient city, you see that nothing really shows up here except for these silent feet. There's also the ruined portal. Uh, which has a chance, by the way, of having the blaze core, which we do not have yet. But yes, we can see shipwreck treasure. Those are pretty easy because they're pretty common. But this, for example, the dun uh, the desert temple, it can roll um, one of the items we already have, which is the heart of the golem. It can also roll this, which does say it's a 39% chance for it to end up in the chest. But there's a lot of things that have higher chances to outweigh that. Um, so we're going to have to kind of keep that in mind as we go after this thing, because it's not going to be a 100% chance. Uh, but I'm hoping that I get lucky. Now, one of the first I want to visit is the Jungle Temple. These things right here supposedly have a chance of housing this item. It's a very low chance, though. I mean, all, all of these other than villages are a pretty low chance. And yeah, you're given a bed right from the start, which is kind of interesting. And we should be able to work our way down inside of this labyrinth, I guess you can say. Now, I definitely recommend checking behind these stairs because there can be a chest back here. I am pretty familiar with these structures. And, well, yeah, there can also be traps everywhere that can do awful things to you, like poison you, for example. Uh, no telling what this one's going to do. Oh, yeah. Chance to poison or hit you with an arrow. 
or the walls could cave in. There's there's all kinds of <laughs> treacherous things that can happen while we explore this. But yeah, one thing I will note, there's not always a lot of uh, a lot of chests inside of these structures, but it should house oh, there we go. It should house very specific jungle temple related loot. So yeah, this one right here. I'm going to run. Oh, goodness. <laughs> that. Uh, there's also, oh, oh this is kind of cool. Oh, and I completely fell out of the water. Of course I did. Yeah, uh, we're speedy in the water. Very, very speedy. And let's see. Yeah, parkour course. <laughs> it would be good if I wasn't like sliding all over the place. And what else do we have? I still haven't seen any chest yet. But down here, like I said, I, I want to check behind these walls because there is a chance that there could be a chest. And for example, there's a chest with all kinds of loot in it. And there's a chest in here that has nothing. Okay, where's the good loot? Okay, interesting. We have a cauldron with a dropper in it. Okay. Ooh, a rogue eye. That's a new eye. I'm pretty sure that's a new eye. And then over here, we have another dropper with a cauldron in it. And what what is this? Huh. I wonder if we're supposed to offer something uh, that's going to open this door. Now, of course, we could drop things in because there are hoppers down here. I'm assuming that, that this is supposed to be like maybe iron. It says iron ore in here and moss. Maybe you drop moss. I have no idea. But I'm going to do the me thing. And we're just breaking through the door. <laughs> and it looks like right here is a chest. Very interesting. And should we open it? Yes. Oh, the whole roof fills with lava. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's that's sort of sad. But was that literally all the loot in this thing? That was that was nothing. I was expecting way more than that. Yeah, honestly, I will say the loot from that was quite terrible. I expected way more from a jungle temple. I think even like regular jungle temples potentially have more than loot than this. I, I, what? Now, right nearby is a village, and I'm hoping that I can potentially find some loot here. It's supposed to be housed in like the lab area, right? The that is the the good loot. If we close this, is that going to anger anything? Ooh, not a shell. I think so long as they don't see me, they should be fine. But yes, this is supposed to be housed in like the village temple. Oh, look at that immersive engineering in here. Oh, it's got all the it's got all the tables. Oh, I should definitely take these because these are kind of a pain to make. Oh, there we go. Yeah, and these are also these are kind of like shulker boxes. Uh, wow, that did that just straight up break them indefinitely? Oh, no, there we go. <laughs> A little bit of world lag uh, to be expected, I guess. So, for example, I feel like this room right here should be considered under that. And it might be because it has a it has a brewing stand. I don't know if those were temple chests specifically. Oh, there's just there's so many, so many things. It's so hard to understand what chest offer what things with the Igmatic Legacy mod, especially when things are changed from vanilla. Yeah, here's another one. And it, ooh, it had the, the fire affinity ring. Hmm. Now this is another fantastical looking village. Like this one right here is huge and is a massive city. So my chances may be a little bit higher if I can figure out what building is actually considered the temple of this. Oh boy. I have no idea. Now, there's definitely a lot of food in these villages, that's for sure. All right, is this building one? I have no idea. And yeah, like I said, tons and tons of food. I have no idea, though, which one would be considered like their temple. And that, that's really hard. That's making it really hard for me to find uh, in this particular pack. Like, it's very difficult to find them, unless that's what the center of those main villages are. Some of these, by the way, I have to break this. Yeah, because it's definitely not any of these structures. Oh, I think I might have found it. Is it this structure right here? Yes, this has to be. But there's not a chest in here, is there? Oh, there is. Wait, but this is... That's got an iron spells table. 
So is this from Iron Spells? Oh, wait, I'm so confused. Oh wait, th this one definitely seems more, yeah. Is there a chest in this? <gasps> There's two chests. This I think is the structure. Oh, we got a, okay, a blink rune and... Okay, so the ones we do find arcane essence in, I'm pretty sure this is the building right here, but this is just a modded version of it. But yes, it's the one that is supposed to house a cleric typically. That is supposed to be the, the location that we're going to find this in. We just gotta go from village to village, I guess. For example, these villages right here, this center building is supposed to be that building. Um, now there are, there are chests inside as well. And I never know. <laughs> There's supposed to be a small chance that it could be housed inside these buildings. Well, this is another one down. Now, thankfully, my elytra is absolutely unbreakable. Otherwise, this would be quite the journey. Okay, here's one of those. Oh, man, we're just getting ink from it. I'm hoping I'm on the right track, though. Oh, interesting. This village actually had two of these structures. But still no luck. Oh, interesting. This village has a thing called wares, which is definitely new. And there's a sealed delivery agreement. And inside this, we give it emeralds for paper. Huh. I believe it might interest you. Trading some goods with me? And then there's a delivery table here, where I guess we'd put emeralds in, and it would... And we put the cardboard box in, and then... Okay. And then it's going to take some time, and I guess it would give us paper in return. Very interesting. And so there we go. We have ourselves some paper. I mean, not the not the most useful of trades in the world, but I'm going to take this because it doesn't appear like we can actually craft this delivery table. This village is very, very Christmassy themed, but I think I found this guy and we found it. Oh, yes. I am so excited over this. Okay. Oh, the chances of that. So you just have to kind of go from village to village, specifically looking for the buildings where the clerics would be housed. Oh, I was so hoping that uh, that I would find this today. Oh, man, it just required quite a bit of traveling. Quite a bit. Uh, more than you, more than you want to know. But I've just proved that it is possible, and I think the best place to find it is in the villages but you've got to find the villages and they are spread out quite far. Thankfully though, I do have chunk loading or not chunk loading. I ended up pre-ginning the world. And uh, so being able to pre-gen the world definitely helps a lot in discovering these places, specifically because we do not have like any kind of explorer's compass to be able to locate these structures. I, I don't even know how you would locate these structures. The chunks just load too slow. Now, after all of that exploring, I actually came out with several different things. Um, well, one, I'm apparently a thief, but if I actually take a look at my skill book, I did find the treasure of the sands skill. Um, and then there was another one. I ended up finding the fast grow skill. So yeah, the skill randomly applies bone meal to surrounding plants. That's kind of crazy sounding. Uh, but yes, I did end up finding those. This one was found inside of another jungle temple that I explored. And this one was actually found inside of a desert temple. Because yes, I did explore those today as well. But I had no luck at all. But now we have it. The Angel's Blessing. This thing on its own is really, really nice. It accelerates you in the direction of your sight. Basically, uh, we have the ability to have like something for our elytra, right? Um, so this in its own right, which I would love to find another one, can basically, if we're flying, accelerate me in that direction by holding space, basically hitting space. I'm just jumping and you can see it is like hitting me with an arrow, but I can also hit G and that accelerates me too. So it's a pretty interesting thing for our elytra, but we already have other skills that definitely help us in this regard. So what I want to do instead with this, <laughs> which is pretty crazy, is I want to turn this into this, the gift of the heaven, which is a scroll. Now, there's also this right here, which is a, a majestic elytra, which is like a constant accelerating elytra. I really, though, want the gift of the heaven. This is going to allow us um, to basically fly around our base, I believe. Um, so it does say right here, provides the ability to fly 
uh, within the range of a beacon, an active beacon, at the cost of slowly consuming your experience. Um, so yes, and it also compensates for the mining speed uh, as well, penalty, which is just phenomenal. Um, so I'm pretty excited about this. Um, and yes, this is going to make building so much easier. And so it's now time to craft this bad boy. Let's go ahead and put this together. I already have some blank scrolls, which is very, very nice. Something else I wanted to kind of check out, right? Is it says hold jump offline to continuously accelerate. I just wanted to make sure this is not create a flight. Now, there is another thing you can make from this scroll when combined with an elytra and some of this other dust. This one will provide free flight. It will, however, consume experience, right? Experience consumption is completely negated within range of a beacon. And this would consume our elytra. And man, elytras are just not the easiest thing to come by. I will say that. But eventually we might end up getting more of them. But for right now, just having the gift of the heaven is going to be so very nice. And bam, we now have it. Oh, the heavenly scroll. It is so good to have you. And excel with this uh, in my inventory, we can actually now creatively fly around our beacon. Oh, which is just going to make building so nice. And apparently it consumes experience pretty slowly. So I am excited about this. Oh, let's get to building. Now, as far as building goes, this is going to start to extend out and up. And this is going to turn into a clock tower. And my planned block to be able to do this with is going to be the combination of cobble deep slate and regular smelted deep slate. Um, so I've had some deep slate smelting up in preparation for this. And I've also set up my backpack here with a, chi a chipped mason's workbench, which I think is probably one of the best ways to actually use the workbenches. Um, because whatever you select will stay selected. You don't have to constantly select it inside of that table, allowing me to make all of this sanded deep slate, which I want to use in combination with this right here. The polished, no, 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 the deep slate bricks. So yes, I'm going to be using deep slate bricks alongside, uh, possibly the polished. I still don't know. I really like the deep slate bricks themselves. So I'm going to be using this and also to be able to do this, I also have a stone cutter, which does make this process a little bit easier. You see, there's a bunch of different uh, other things here, but the, the main thing I want is those bricks. And this the same with a stone cutter, it automatically knows what you had selected originally. So it makes it a lot easier to pull these items out. Now, something else is going to make building a lot easier is by using a diamond backpack here. The same thing that I had my stone cutter in, I'm putting an advanced refill upgrade in, and this is going to refill my slot here. And I'm going to keep these three items in here and use a trowel. Uh, and by keeping those set up in there, it's always going to make sure that there is a stack inside my inventory. So as soon as I place one down, another one is going to instantly refill from my bag, um, which is fantastic. That is exactly what I want. And I could even split these up. Uh, I think in the bag, if I have two things as filters, does that actually work? Will that keep two stacks of items? It doesn't seem like it. So yeah, it, it is kind of interesting. Maybe if you had two separate backpacks, then you might be able to keep it. I, I have no idea, but this is going to be fantastic. This is what I need because I'm going to start building up from this. Um, and so, for example, right here, if I use my wand of symmetry, which I think I have in my bag, right? It's in my main bag. If I use the wand of symmetry, it's going to help me constantly maintain this refill because otherwise it is very hard to deal with like the wand of symmetry and also keep these items in stock inside of your inventory. It is very, very difficult. So I can use a trowel from Cork to build this out a lot more effectively. Um, and so let me go ahead and, for example, start my building process. I'm going to go like up like this on the sides. And I am extending out, by the way. So just like this. And then I can start to functionally place in all of my random blocks. Oh, this is this is just going to get too nice. Too nice. So yes, I'm going to fill these in too. Like this. And you can see it's going to constantly keep that refilled in my inventory. I, mean, I, don't, I just don't think it gets any easier building than this. This is fantastic. 
Now, I think for the clock tower, I actually want to make this like a seven by seven. I want this to be quite a big sort of clock face. And so it's going to look very much like this, I think, and is going to be extended out. Yes, that is going to look very good like this. Now, this, of course, is going to be supported by some spruce. I am going to have some logs that actually run up underneath this on all the sides. And there's also going to be some logs and struts and stuff like that that are going to be formed here as well. And I'm going to be adding some more detail on the outside. Now, up top, I still want to keep this castle vibe going. So I am going to sprawl this out like so. Um, and uh, I'm probably going to cap these with these stones here. Very nice. And make sure we have some stones running like that. Perfect. Um, and then I also want to build out a little bit more here in the center uh, and make a kind of domed tower, I think. Now I've got to keep in mind, domes are not easy to build, but they are a little bit easier to sort of set up whenever you do have, for example, the uh, the Wand of Symmetry. Um, so I can, I can constantly go at this until I get just the right size for everything. And so this is going to make things a whole lot easier to build. Yeah, this, this is, makes it almost too easy. It almost feels like sort of cheating as far as building goes. I, I love, 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 love the actual building, uh, wand of symmetry. Oh, this is fantastic. Look at this. Okay. So there we go. And I think. Once this turns to copper is going to look pretty nice. I think I'm going to add some like copper slabs on the sides here. Or I could just continue this down like this and maybe add some stairs. Now, this is really starting to look pretty good. Now, uh, I like I said, I'm going to slowly wait for this to kind of degrade and turn into different shades. And as it does, that's where we're going to use our honeycombs that we farmed last episode. But uh, I think for the inside of this... I want this to be sort of a white material to really stick out like a sore thumb. Um, and then I need to kind of place in my buttons that are going to basically show the times um, on this clock. So yeah, spruce buttons should work quite well. And I'm thinking just like this, something like that, kind of giving like off the vague idea that uh, this is a clock. Now, as far as the actual hands go, we're going to have a little shorter one right here. And this is going to be for our uh, our hours, basically. And then this is going to be sort of like our seconds. Um, and this is pretty cool. The clockwork bearing that we're going to be using um, has the ability, believe it or not, to actually interact with two separate sort of contraptions that we glue together. Um, so if I go ahead and grab some glue... Right, and we start working on this, by the way, I don't know if the Wand of Symmetry affects us any, but if we have two separate contraptions like this that are not glued together, but are glued to each other separately, the clockwork bearing actually recognizes this and will actually spin the outer one uh, faster than the inner one. So we can use the inner one as our hour and we can use the outer one as our seconds or minutes. Now from within is where all of the magic is gonna happen, right? Because we need to hook up our clockwork bearing just like this. Uh, let's actually make sure that is rotated the right way. So hold down shift. And all of these should now be placed in uh, appropriately. And it does have some interesting things right here. So we do have hand arrangement. So this right here says our, our hand first and you can actually change this. Um, so I like to have the hour hand first or at least the way we have it set up, you could have minute hand first and then second hand, or we have a 24 hour hand first. I think I'm gonna go with hour hand first and then the uh, second hand is going to be on the outside. So by default, this should all be ready to go. And what I should be able to do is I should be able to carry my signal from here up and then into a gearbox. Now, as far as powering everything goes, I'm just going to use an encased chain drive all the way up and this is going to power the gearbox. This should also, however, uh, and I, I don't know if I have to change the rotation on these, but if I do, I will go ahead and do that. But I should be able to just add a shaft to all of these individual components. And let's see if this is going to start this off. And they should all be hopefully synchronized. At least so I hope. <laughs> Contraption o'clock. Okay, so that's going to run. And it should be, it should position it based on the current time of day. 
Uh, so I hope. So, there we go. And then now to check on all of them. So there it goes. It shows right here. And are all of them the same? They are. Oh, that is so cool looking with it actually ticking and rotating. Oh, that is so satisfying. Now, there is something I want to do real quick. I want to break these just for a moment. And I want to extend my contraptions out just a little bit. Um, so these should hopefully reset. Oh, interesting. So this one has not reset. Oh, that's because this is connected to the, the direct line. Okay, so um, yes, once these have no power, they should do this. Uh, and that will allow me to go in here and fix this. So I actually want to add something to like the outside part right here, uh, just to make it look a little bit more fancy. Like for example, this copper bolt right here. And uh, I just need to kind of extend the glue to it. And then we can turn it back on and it's ready to go. And oddly enough, it was just in time because I just ran out of experience just ever so slightly. So perfect. Now, once this is ready to go, yes, that just gives it a little bit more, I think. Uh, and then I also want to decorate this frame a little bit more. And I tell you what, there's just something about being able to build in creative mode that just really allows me to express myself a whole lot more than not having that ability. Oh, it is just so nice. And I can get things done so much faster, which I really do appreciate. <laughs> Time is valuable. And I just love to be able to kind of create as fast as I can. It's like giving a tool uh, to a, uh, like a painter. It's like, it's like giving an iPad, for example, to be able to sketch out stuff when you're limited on resources. I mean, it's just, oh, it's, it's so good. Now there's still a ton more that I want to do in this world and still some mods that I want to explore. This right here, I want to definitely make these uh, walls and gates look a little bit nicer and a little less plain, especially with the train going around. Um, but man, the center, the tower here. Oh, that is, that is fantastic now. And the fact that we can now build around beacons, we can place down beacons and fly around them. I mean, it does cost some experience and yes, it does consume quite a bit of XP, but making XP from like just going mining is quite easy. Um, and also all of the XP that we've just stored and we could potentially make a very easy XP farm just using a mob farm. But for right now, this is going to have to be it for today's episode. What an amazing looking structure. I am pretty happy with myself here. And even the inside here, oh man, it's going to start looking really, really good um, as these start to oxidize. And then I'm going to start to hold their state as they are oxidized by uh, hitting them with some combs, um, which I think is going to look very, very, very nice. So yes, I've even started to take this and... Uh, I've started to kind of texturize this a little bit more up top uh, by placing in some regular copper blocks. And it's, ah, ah, it's good. It's good. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below. What do you think of the clockwork bearing? What do you think of this build? Do you like it? I'm going to incorporate a little bit more foliage to kind of blend it into the rest of the build. But I would love for it. I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comment section below. Of course, guys. Thank you so very much for watching, and if you did enjoy, be sure to click that subscribe button, and also give this video a huge thumbs up. It does take a lot of time to put these videos together, and so that's just one way to say thank you. And, well, I thank you guys. And speaking of thanks, it's now time for me to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that is going to be a huge thanks going out to Goosey. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way. Over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible and also getting access to the world downloads. So be sure to check that out if you're interested, as mentioned at the beginning of the video. And well, guys, I thank you guys all so very, very much. I'll see you in the next one. And thanks for watching. Bye.